Welcome to Ignite India Education, India's leading design, architecture, fine arts, law and management entrance exam preparation ISO 9001-2015 Certified Institute. Download the Ignite India app to get free access to NATA study materials and to know all top ranking architecture colleges admission. Download free PDF with all college ranking details from Ignite India app. Fill registration form for a free counseling session in the top ranking architecture colleges admission. The link is kept in the video description. Canopies, all the terms which are there, you can see. Uh, the modern interpretation of it may vary from the classical interpretation. Okay, we will see that. It's a projecting hood suspended over an altar. Altar means what? Altar, they say. Pillar kind of a structure. Pillar kind of a structure. It's a kind of high table. Okay, in the churches, if you've seen, Okay, all the ceremonies that are done by the priest are done on an altar. Okay, it's a uh, it's a free above above the ground level. Okay, a statue or an edge that you know. Okay, uh, this is a projected outwards canopy. Next is porch. Canopy can be used in any number of buildings. Porch is usually for houses, domestic purpose. Okay. Porch is a roofed structure, okay, usually open at the sides, projecting from the face of a building and used to protect the entrance. Okay, in United States, it's called, it's called a veranda or sometimes also referred as portico. They are the same thing, different places, it's called different things. It is usually from projecting outward from the face of a building, first part of a building. Okay, it is to protect the door, main entrance. Okay, it is usually open uh, this one from the sides again. Maybe. Okay, cupola. A cupola is a relatively small, often dome like tall structure on a top of a building, often used to provide a lookout or to admit light and air. It's usually it usually crowns a larger dome or roof. Okay, this for example is a cupola okay uh, this is a dome shape they are saying usually it is dome shape but not always okay it usually it, it is used to let in light and air okay and it all uh, usually tops the top of a uh, roof or a larger dome okay it's not they are saying it's not very big but enough to you know keep a lookout uh, they said it is Usually dome shape, but it can vary also. This is also a cupola. Okay. It's a rectangular in shape. Okay. Uh, I think you might have seen it in some military areas where they have a, a tall tower, and on top of that, there's usually a rectangular one. It may or may not be thought. Next. Lighthouse. Huh? Something like a lighthouse. Where uh -huh. Lighthouse ka top is there, no? Like that. Yes. Like that. Dormer. 
A dormer is a small structure that projects from a sloping roof with a window in the facade face. Facade. Okay, this one, this window that you can see, it's a dormer window. Okay. Uh, it usually it uh, projects from a sloping roof. You can see a sloping roof. Okay, it comes outside with a window in the facade face. Okay. Uh, the I don't know if you guys remember in the type of roofs, there is a dormer roof also. Okay, that is the distinct uh, this one of example of this type. Okay. Now uh dormer doesn't always have a window there are some cases where there are no windows okay for example this one this is a window okay here there is a dormer but there's no window okay Understood? Yes. Okay. Next, facade. Facade is the exterior face of a building. Okay. Often used used to refer to the wall in which the building entry is located. Building main entry. Now, see this, this is the structure of a building, not the building itself. The front face of it that you can see here okay this is the facade of a building meaning the main entrance is here okay and from, from the front if you see only this part is visible that is called the facade no facade and porch are not the same thing okay facade means just the front view of the building porch is a, another part of a building okay, it may not be included no it will be included in facade Ma'am, is the facade a fake entry like object? No, 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 it's not fake entry. I just took this image so that you can understand. It just means if your house is there, no, your house, ka, if you see it from the front, meaning from the main door, if you see it, the way it looks, all the features in it make a facade. Yes, surface, front elevation, correct. Okay. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Motif. I think you might have heard this, you know, in many different, from many different places. It's a, it has a general meaning, not just uh, related to architecture. Okay. So, motif is a theme or a theme or predominant feature of a design. Okay. This is a general definition again. It's a predominant feature of a design. Here that you can see, it's uh, an example of a motif in architecture. Okay? The design they have done here, it's a motif. Uh, if you see on uh, clothes, the pattern, suppose you go, okay? The pattern which is repeated on the top, one top everywhere, that is also a motif. It's a pattern, okay? Sometimes it is repeated, sometimes it's not. Understood? Understood? Yes, ma'am. Yes. 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 Bay window. This also I think we have discussed before, but bay window are a combination of three or more windows which angle out beyond an exterior uh, in a square hexagonal or octagonal shape shape to you leave bay window is a general term actually for a window which projects outside the surface of the uh, wall okay it can be any shape square hexagonal octagonal trapezoidal any shape just which projects outside and you can see a say, window seat literally Parapet. Okay. Parapet is a portion of wall that projects above the adjacent roof. Okay. So this is the roof. Okay. 
this is the parapet which is projecting above the adjacent to this is the parapet okay understood yes okay i am going to need confirmation for these ones because sometimes the uh, the wording of the definition no, may not be always clear so pediment again this is something we have discussed not in detail though okay pediment is the triangular gable end of a classic build, classical building or the same form used elsewhere in the build okay what does that mean if the roof is uh, not hip roof gable roof okay the triangular piece that you can see end okay of a classical building usually these pediments and all what we are discussing usually they are they were made in a classical building in modern uh, architecture you don't see these much not that they won't use it any anywhere okay now uh, the definition is this okay pediment is a triangular pediment okay types of pediment a curved pediment okay then a broken pediment which is not complete that's it okay i hope you guys understood and this and pediment is a uh, is that a decorative hmm? element uh, no 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 sometimes because of the roof it the shape is like this this is the main uh, the roof okay where the wall is built then this is the main roof sometimes you know they don't just keep it like this you have seen might have seen houses with roofs just like this meaning from the inside you can see this shape but some of the roofs they make a wall then there is a space here this is that okay? not just decorative understood yes yeah did you okay fair yeah. again i might be pronouncing it wrong we are see it's a square or rectangular masonry or wood pair okay which supports a building and carries the weight of it to the ground okay meaning see these are piers okay they are uh, wider okay they come between the column of the wall and the roofs uh, sorry arches here see you can see a column okay and the pier you can can you see the difference Yes. This the pier supports the whole building. Meaning, if it is two storied, it supports the whole building. Column is something which supports uh, the arches to the ground. Okay. I hope you guys understood this. I just put this picture just for, for that only. Okay. Joists. Joists is a series of horizontal. Horizontal members used to support the floor or ceilings. Now remember, this can be used to support ceiling or floor. Okay. What is the beam? From the horizontal member. Mm -hmm. Horizontal member which uh, supports slab or uh, structure. Yes. it uh, see here you can see the image okay this is a beam and this is also a beam okay it supports the whole uh, suppose we are building for one floor okay the whole floor may beams are put okay this is that beam joists are horizontal members which support the floor or ceiling as you can see that okay uh, joists are something which are used to support the this is the ceiling okay floor also they use the connecting members between the beams also uh, these... so it's always below the beams or yes yes you can see that true i think i had an image actually ma'am so... is that a rcc structure or hmm? just a second okay. yes
Yes, I found uh, this one. See, I took it from Google directly. This is a beam. These are joints. Now clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Rafter. Huh. As I was saying, uh, many of the definitions here that we are doing, most of them actually, are all external parts of the building. Okay. Next, we'll do internal parts, then the construction parts. Okay. Again, in general, not very much in detail. They won't ask you in detail. Okay. Rafter. A structural roof member that slopes up from the wall to the peak of the roof. Okay. Here, see, these are rafters. It is used in a kind of hip roof. Okay. And not just hip roof. Uh, this is an example of hip, hip roof. That's how I'm taking it. These were ones, okay, that slopes are called rafters. Here you can see joists, which are horizontal, rafters, which are sloping. Okay. Some of the buildings that you see, these type of uh, buildings, okay, there are connecting lines in the middle. Those are joists, horizontal ones. Okay, any doubt? No, ma'am. Okay. Aisle, okay. Aisle is a portion of a church or basilica, okay, that parallels or encircles the major sections of the structure, such as nave. Okay, now see the middle part that you can see here, XX, which is marked, which I'm pointing at, it's called a nave. Okay, the portion which is parallel to it. Okay, and because this is the door, this is the door, that's why it's not encircling it, but it's being parallel. This is called the eye. Okay, if you've seen any uh, English movies, okay, in that you have you the marriage is you know, no, they say the right. girl is walking down the aisle. So, this is what they mean. Okay, aisle is where the people usually sit. And she's walking down the aisle. Okay. Next, colonnade. Have we done this? What is basilica? Basilica is a type of. It's a type of hall. Okay. Mainly it is for the church only. Okay. I will okay, read it. It's a long uh, hall. Or a building with double colonnades and semicircular. We'll discuss that because it's a lot of things. Okay. Colonnade. Colonnade is a long sequence of columns joined by their entablature, often freestanding or a part of a building. Okay. Paired or multiple pairs of columns are normally employed in a colonnade, which can be straight or curved. Okay. This is an extreme type of colonnade, as you can see. There are a series of columns. Joined by an entablature. This is the entablature, the horizontal part. They can be curved or straight, as you can see. Paired or multiple pairs of columns. They can be only two or they can be multiple, as you can see. So, colonnade is a series of columns. Joined. Next, arcade. An arcade is a succession of contiguous, contiguous arches with each arch supported by a colonnade of columns or piers. Here, what are they using? Piers. 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 Yes. The, in the previous example, we saw you know, the difference between pier and columns. There, the, it was supported, two arches were supported by columns, and then that set was supported with piers. So arcade is a again continuous uh, projection of arches, okay, supported by the piers or columns or colonnade of columns. Okay, now we saw we saw that there was entablature. What is entablature? So entablature is a horizontal assemblage of mouldings, bands, and detailing in the upper portion of a building. Okay. It is placed along the top of and therefore supported by vertical columns. Okay. So this is an entablature, the whole of it from here to here. Okay. It is usually, not usually, it is supported by a column. Okay. It's a horizontal assemblage. Okay. This is one 
part of the entablature you are seeing. If there are two, three columns, okay, it will be joined. Same structure will be joined. It's a horizontal uh, collection of moldings, bands, and detailing. There are parts of entablature which has all these things. Okay, it's an upper part of a building. Okay, so it is supported by the vertical columns. Ma'am, in the picture, is it showing the part between a column and roof? No, no. After, after this, there is a roof. Okay. After cornice, there is a roof. Until here, from here to here, it's entablature. Then this capital, then column stops. Okay. So entablature has cornice, frieze, and architrave. These are the parts. Okay. What is cornice? Ma'am, the decorative part that is protrude, protruding outwards. Which supports the slab or if it... Yes. Cornice, okay. Doric architecture, yes. Doric architecture. See, it's uh, generally any horizontal decorative molding that crowns a building or furniture element, okay. It's a horizontal piece of molding, okay? Just... That crowns a building or a furniture element, okay? This one, is above column, the entablature is there. Out of that, there's a roof of the building, okay? It, it crowns the building, last part, okay? Next, frieze. Frieze is the middle part of an entablature. It's a horizontal band that runs up the corners come below the roof. Yes. Just below the roof. It attaches to the wow, kids. Hmm? Okay. It's a horizontal band that runs above the architrave and below the cornice in classical architecture. The frieze may be decorated with designs or carvings, okay? It's a middle part, okay? It's a horizontal band. Uh, it's quite thick actually, okay? It can be covered in designs or carvings or it can be plain. It is between cornice and architect, not very much. Architrave is the lowest part of an entablature resting horizontally directly on the capitals or tops of the columns. Okay? The architrave supports frieze and the corners above it. Now see, this part, this is the roof, suppose. Okay? This part is the cornice. This is the frieze, horizontal band. This is the architrave. Okay? This is suppose this supposed to be a capital on the, of the column. It's an architrave. Supports these two and it's the base part of the entablature. Okay. Ma'am, can we call entablature as a, a beam part or other what than part? that? Beam beam included part. No, I, I didn't get you. What did you say? I couldn't hear you. Means uh, we can, can we call that interbluter as beam part? Beam part, you're saying? Mm, no, I don't think so. Okay, I'll show you it. It is a part of columns, okay? And the column part that is there, it is not attached to beams. Beams is inside the construction. Okay, inside the roof, it is supported. It may be protruding outside, but it is not. No, you cannot call it that. Okay. Atrium. Atrium is an open central court surrounded by a building, as you can see here. Atrium. Okay. It is supported by not all the sides, but it is surrounded by buildings. Okay. It usually used to be open from the uh, above part. Okay. But now some of the modern uh, atriums have glass roofs, as you can see. Okay. Ma'am, is it uh, yeah. same like courtyard? 
No, courtyard is exactly the outside. Okay, it is uh, completely outside. This one is surrounded by a building. Okay, ma'am. Courtyard. Uh, I think courtyard don't contain a roof part. Ah, uh, definitely no. Yeah, true. That is also there. Yeah, atrium. You can say that it brings some part of the outside into the building because of its open uh, roof structure. Courtyard is completely outside. Attic. Attic is a small top story within a roof above the uppermost ceiling. Okay, what this means is, uh, how many of you guys know what is an attic? Like, not the definition, just the general. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. So usually in a gable roof that you can see, okay, the triangular upper part that we saw. Yeah, this is the uppermost roof. Okay, above this, there's the uh, another roof, and this is called the attic. Okay, usually it it actually is used generally as a storeroom or an extra bedroom, as you can see. If you guys have seen home alone, you'll get it. Okay, buttress and flying buttress. I included both of them in one only because then you can see the difference. Buttress is a vertical member projecting from a wall. Okay, to stabilize it or to resist the lateral thrust of an arch, roof, or what? Okay, it is a vertical member as you can see. Okay, it is used to support the roof arch, not so much arch here. Okay, ma'am, if it's an arch, then won't it be called uh, the thing? Pilaster. Oh, sorry. Uh, what is it? Pier. No, this is just the outward. Okay, pier would be extending from here to here, top to bottom. Okay. Can we call that column? Column then. Column. What is the yeah, column? That is looking like column. Ma'am, if it if that it's arched, part. then no more column. Uh, okay, a column is a freestanding pillar, you can say. Okay. It's an upright pillar, okay? A freestanding. It is not uh, put into a wall and it is not supporting anything. I mean, it's supporting the roof, but the, the uh, this one, buttress that is there, it is supporting the connection between the wall and the roof. Okay, column would be a freestanding pillar. It its shape does not matter in this case. Okay, lateral thrust is when it, uh, it puts pressure outwards. Okay, the roof of the building. Suppose, especially when uh, you know in this build type of building where the walls are thick and the roofs are sometimes it may be thick or not. It projects the pressure outward. Lateral thrust is that. Okay, it balances it. Okay, now flying buttress is a masonry structure typically consisting of an inclined, see inclined, and buttress is a vertical. Inclined bar carried on a half arch, okay, that extends from the upper part of wall to a pair uh, some distance away and ca carries the thrust of a roof or a vault. Okay. The inside of it is the pillar, the pier. So this one is a pier. Okay. This is a flying buttress. This is the buttress. Understood? Thanks. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, is the flying buttress always over something like yes. over the roof or something? Yes, mostly always in the in your exam also example you might have seen. No? Always it's inclined 
okay it can be broader than this it can be longer than this but it is always inclined and attached to a wall okay ma'am coffer uh, you might have seen uh, heard of coffered ceilings okay this is where it comes coffer is a series of sunken panels in the shape of square rectangle or octagon in a ceiling soffit or vault okay it is a pair of sunken panels okay uh, the shape can be square rectangle octagon here that you can see it is a square okay it's sunken as you can see in a ceiling Ma'am, so is it a type of false ceiling what is it is it a type of false ceiling it may be included coffer can be included in a false ceiling but it can be also part of the real ceiling also do hardly we see those in commercial buildings and all okay okay uh, uh, what is soffit soffit is the underside of an arch or a balcony okay can we uh, can we call that decorative part yes it is most definitely decorative okay but it is used in many of the buildings that you, uh, you know, classical buildings that you have seen in india also you can see this. it's actually a part of asian architecture okay it's not functional uh, it's just functional but definitely it occurs so if it is the underside of the arch uh, of an arch or a balcony so coffer can be used on the ceilings on the top of the vault or so fits this is a modern interpretation of coffered ceiling this is an uh, traditional one okay ma'am can you explain so fit again okay, okay. so fit is the underside of an arch uh, balcony or overhanging eaves the underside that you can see in an arch which you cannot see from the front that is so fit okay that also can be uh, function sorry that also can be used in coffers okay understood okay. yes ma'am shall i show in image just a second Ma'am, we can call it as bottom view also, like yes, bottom part of the this one, yes. This is an overhanging eave. मतलब the roof, no? If it is projected outside, overhanging eave it's called. The underside of it, this is the sofa. Okay. next gazebo gazebo is a pavilion structure meaning free standing structure sometimes octagonal or turret shaped okay what is this shape octagon yeah octagonal shape okay often built in parks or gardens or spacious public area some are uh, used on occasion as bandstand okay this uh, you might have seen these in parks okay many of you might have seen okay gazebo it's uh, actually sometimes in the classical buildings no in georgian type of buildings i have actually seen gazebos in houses but those are all uh, modern uh, interpretation of it i'll show you what is a modern gazebo Um, can gazebos be roofless sometimes? No, always. Always, I have seen it has a roof. That is actually the um, use of it, protect from rain. They okay. are also used in hotels, like in hotels. Yes, uh, outside hotels like gardens. Ah, I like that. Oh, yeah. Just a second, okay.
which which hmm. yeah see this is a modern gazebo as you can see it's not exactly octagon shape okay or a turret shape but it's a gazebo it's a modern uh, variation Pavilion, a freestanding structure near the main building or an ending structure on building wings. Okay, it's a freestanding structure. Again, this is again a modern interpretation of pavilion. Okay. It is a freestanding structure. Uh, it's not joined anywhere near the main building or an ending structure on building wings. Building wings means what? Is it a door? No, no. Uh, whenever uh, you know there are huge classes. Building block. Yes, building block. Okay. Whenever there are huge castles and all, okay, there are always left wing, right wing, north wing, east wing. Those are all kinds of wings are there. Meaning it's a separate part, not separate exactly. It's a specific part of the. Building. So, a, if you have many of those type wings, okay, pavilion can be a freestanding structure near the end of those. It's a, is it almost like an entrance? No, it's not an entrance exactly. It is near it. It may or may not be. Okay. This it's a castle. I think it's in Germany. I don't know if you guys. No, what is the name? It's a new, it's a big German name. Okay, so these turrets, there are turrets. Okay, this part, uh, I don't know which direction it is, but this part will be known as one wing. Okay, this part will be known as, as another wing. If it is a single story structure, okay, it will have different wings east wing, no, west wing. Also, in residential areas and societies, we have wings. Yeah, buildings. true. Correct, correct. Yes, it's a part of the uh, society, but it is a little separated. But ma'am, what is use of that? <laughs> you can't always have uses of uh, architect in architecture. Uh, can you guys uh, remember where else you've heard the word pavilion commonly? Ma'am, in exhibitions and uh, fairs. Ma'am, in cricket. Yes, cricket is the most commonly used. Uh, no, in usme they use with the word pavilion. Okay, it's not the in that it is near the main building. Okay, they say going to the pavilion. I think not very good at cricket. Is it pavilion? 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 They go back once they go out and you know, come in. Yeah, that is one of the examples. Uh, correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Pedestal. It's the base or support on which uh, statue, obelisk, or column is mounted. Please tell the difference between cornice and eaves. Okay. We will cover this when we'll cover eaves. That I will explain. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. The base or support on which a statue, obelisk, or column is mounted. Okay. What is an obelisk? Ma'am, the tower which is present, long tower in front of churches mostly. Yes. Uh, it's a it's a pillar, as you said. It uh, in uh, ancient this one they used to have these uh, obelisks. It is a mark of. Uh, a different different things mm -hmm. it depends on the purpose for which the building was built okay we have seen obelisk where have we seen it saint peter's basilica yes yeah. yeah, saint peter's basilica when we were studying the structure of it internal structure there was the obelisk in front of the uh, the middle circular courtyard okay what is a plinth Ma'am, is that it's only the made up of above the ground? Iron or concrete? This one is a concrete. Okay. 
Mm. This one is concrete. The pillar, now this one, okay, it can be a pillar, whatever this is, this is part of the uh, statue, pillar column, which is there. The cement part which is there is a pedestal. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon button to get all notifications whenever we will be uploading our new video. Download Ignite India app. Stay safe, stay positive, good luck. We'll see you in next video.